What's good, folks? It's Nightmare Frame here with the most dumbest build you'd ever see. I'm pretty sure you've seen dumber, but hey, I'm coming at you with a tank ash. Now, this is not an endurance build. It's not a build that's gonna take you to like level 9,009. No, no, no. This is a build where you can just chill, have fun, and make fun of your friend who plays Inaros because it's still tankier than Inaros. Okay, enough with the Inaros bashing, but, but still, right? You have shields. And Naros doesn't, so you still have better survivability. It's pretty simple. I'm using the helmet ability Elemental Ward. Not Gloom, not anything like that. Yes, I get you could use Parasitic Armor to get some more armor, Sacrifice Shields to get armor, Gloom, slow down enemies. That doesn't mean you're tanky. No. Now, there are two things that you can use on this build. You can either go with the Heat to give you more health, or you can go with the Cold Elemental Ward to give you more armor and that damage reflection. So when enemies shoot at you, you can proc them with the Cold status effect, slow them down, etc. Etc. You can run either aura, heat or cold. Up to you. I decided to go with cold because I don't know, it feels more comfortable to use. And of course, it gives you more armor. I'm synergizing this loadout with the DiQ and an Akana. The DiQ using the amalgam target acquired just for the lifesteal when you have an Akana. And since we're playing with Ash, definitely a bleed Nakana. Let me demonstrate how this build works in you guessed it, Steel Path. Now in this build, we replaced his invisibility for Elemental Ward because we don't need to go invisible or tanky. Yeah. And we got some armor, we got some lifesteal. It's pretty damn good. Look at that. We already activated Arcane Guardian, but guess what? We can do something even better. You want more armor? Just do a finisher. All right, and trigger arcane ultimatum. And you can easily, continuously do your finishers with your fourth ability and re-trigger arcane ultimatum, or even use the fourth ability to finish off acolytes. There we go, we got some red crits, we're tanky. I mean, it's a pretty casual build and it's, you, you don't have to try hard or anything like that. There you go, do a finisher. Look at that. We're killing enemies very easily. Look at this. I'm not even trying. I'm just pressing my epitaph. If you do not have Prime Sure Footed, you can use the new core. It's all good. But I'm using the epitaph because it's, you know, lazy. I can prime enemies from a distance and kill them off. Look at that. Shoot at me, bro. Look at that. Cold status effect from the Elemental Ward Cold Aura. We take damage. Hey, we can actually lifesteal. This build will last you until around level 500, which is more than enough for, for, for the casual player base, which is around two hours in Steel Path before you start to realize that health and armor is not going to let you last long. All right, we got an Acolyte. Let's show you how this works against an Acolyte. Who is it? All right, it's, 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 not, it's not violence. All right, we're gonna use our clone to get rid of the Acolyte. We're not even gonna pay attention. Look at that. Look at that. We didn't even touch the Acolyte physically. We let our little buddy, <laughs> Bladestorm, to get rid of the Acolyte. I mean, it's not bad, right? Tanky Ash. We got some shields back. Elemental Ward. Some finishers to get Arcane Ultimatum triggered. Since we're taking damage, we're triggering Arcane Guardian. You don't need Grace. You don't need some expensive Arcane like Arcane Grace. Nah, 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 nah. We got Lifesteal. Kill, heal up. Easy. Okay, now that we're back in the Simulacrum, let's take a look at how I've built this Ash. Uh, it's, it's not, it's not going to be that mind-blowing. It's pretty straightforward. As you know, I am using Elemental Ward over my smoke bombs shadow smoke shadow what the invisibility ability you can either run heat or cold how do i do that by simply changing your emissive colors any dark white is going to be in the cold category blues for electricity and of course reds and yellows for heat you get the gist of it that's how you simply change your elemental buff in the aura i'm running growing power for that 25 percent power strength when i proc a status effect on on a target 
easily doing that with my primer the epitaph spam the nikana slashing through enemies very easily proccing this buff and then i have prime sure-footed now remember what i said if you do not have this you can run handspring or if you don't want to rely on the epitaph you can use the kuva nucor i'll show you both loadouts but a great replacement for this before you get prime sure-footed is handspring 160 percent knockdown recovery trust me because spending less time on your butt is a huge dps increase and it's good for your survivability because once you're down enemies can just step on you and shoot you duration at 155 percent with prime continuity the duration is mostly for my elemental war to give me that armor buff or health buff depends on which one you use prime flow for the large energy pool power strength mod with two umbral mods and augur secrets augur secrets is obviously gonna help me replenish some shields you know part of the augur set and the two umbral mods here are for the health and power strength increase when you combine them both adaptation for that damage resistance to a certain damage time after you've taken it quite a bit it's gonna be a lot harder to maintain this buff when you go to the later levels so for early steel path two hours adaptations pretty damn good i have carnus carapace that gives me armor and health and also running gladiator aegis you can run whatever gladiator mod you want here you can go with finesse or resolve i went with aegis for even more armor but since it's part of the gladiator set i get that crit chance increase when i build up combo now in the arcanes i have arcane ultimatum this gives me 1200 armor when i get a finisher kill and how do i get that finisher kill by simply using my blade storm since it does finisher attacks and arcane guardian take damage i get armor pretty straightforward right okay moving on to my weapons definitely you're going to be running the daikyu and any nikana of your choice the daikyu here is only used for the amalgam target acquired because i get three percent lifesteal on nikanas amalgam serration just for the sprint speed twitch if you're switching between weapons this gives me just some more utility and a little bit extra utility but the most important thing here is amalgam target acquired and dexterity why dexterity because i get that combo duration because you don't have to run Naramon. you can run whatever focus school you want Zenric if you think you're running out of energy too quickly you can go with vazarin if you want a bit more survivability so if you're indecisive with focus school definitely run dexterity arcane on your primary and secondary now the secondary here is the epitaph epitaph is very versatile when you're priming a large group of enemies because it's it's AoE. You shoot, boom, explodes all around you. It's also using the Dexterity Arcane for the additional combo duration. I went with Viral and Heat. And since Epitaph has its Force procs, I also get Blast, Cold, and some IPS. I went with Amalgam Barrel Diffusion just for that little extra dodge speed animation. Doesn't do anything extra. If you want, you can use the regular Barrel Diffusion, but this is just for, you know, the feel of it. Multi-shot and just a bit fire rate. And here I didn't max out my Gunslinger too much because I don't want too much fire rate because too much fire rate will result in a fully charged shot and that will be a single target shot which is more focused on single target dps rather than a primer and for the exilis you can run whatever you want i went with reflex draw for even more utility this is very useful in other warframe builds Prime Fulmination for that larger blast radius. If you don't want to run the Epitaph, you can also run a Kuva Nucor. I have a Magnetic Kuva Nucor. Why Magnetic? Because it gives me an additional combined element for a better proccing. And you can also take this against Corpus units. Taking a look at the Nucor build, same thing. Viral Heat and we have Magnetic. And on top of that, it comes with base radiation. So you're getting 5. Now, why do I say 5? Because it has the Microwave status effect, which will be additional damage here i went with a lot of fire rate since it's a beam weapon you need that fire rate to ramp up your your procs really fast and of course dexterity eject magazine meaning i don't have to reload manually i shoot demonstration if you look right there shoot melee and look at that, we're reloaded. And I also have the synth set, which is additional reload. We'll get to that. And for the Nakana build, it is a non-elemental slash build because the weapon is heavy and slash. So we don't need to add any more elements because our elements are coming from our primer and a Panzer Vopophila. Blind Justice Stance, it's very mobile. You can change this to Decisive Judgment if you want for more increase in bleeds, for, for that increase in bleed multipliers. But Blind Justice is just the comfort 
comfy pick. Condition overload for our base damage multiplier that stacks up with each unique status effect. Our crit chance, crit damage, and even more crit damage. And since it's part of the gladiator set, we get more crit chance. Range is super important. You need to hit your enemies. Building up combo and hitting more enemies will increase your DPS. I went Berserker here because it's more comfortable in a survival setting because you're out there killing enemies left and right. If you have Prime Fury, go for it. Prime Fury allows you to have that attack speed buff all the time, especially if there is some downtime in a mission. For example, interception, disruption, defense. Berserker is for consistent kills. That's why it's used here. Weeping Wounds, building up our status chance with each combo. This will help me proc my bleeds even more. The Primed Smite mod will multiply my initial hit and double dip with damage over time. And my main damage over time here is going to be bleeds, thanks to all that slash increase. My Panzer Vopophila is going to be there to help me proc even more status effects and because it just doesn't die. And on top of that, I get the synth set. And if you're using the Kuva Nucor, this will help you reload your weapon even faster along with Eject Magazine. And you don't need a Decaying Dragon Key because shields and adaptation go really well together. So if you're looking for more quirky weird builds, just tell me and maybe we can uh, work on something. But if you've enjoyed this video and learned something new, please feel free to leave a like, share and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching and as always, peace.